लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल गुरमीत सिंह जी ऑनरेबल गवर्नर ऑफ उत्तराखंड डायरेक्टर लबासना श्री श्री राम तरुण कांति जॉइंट डायरेक्टर लबासना मिस सोजान्या वी हैव डिस्टिंग फैकल्टी हेयर वी हैव सेक्रेटरी वाइस प्रेजिडेंट श्री सुनील कुमार गुप्ता एंड एलिमनस ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूट एटी सेवन बैच आई आई टी कानपुर बैकग्राउंड द चैलेंज टू मी इज फॉर्मिडेबल डॉक्टर वंदना कुमार एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी राज्यसभा नाइनटीन नाइन्टी टू इंडियन डिफेंस अकाउंट सर्विस योर ओन तो गुप्ता जी इज ऑल्सो योर ओन बट जनरेशनल गैप श्री सुजीत कुमार टू थाउजेंड टेन बैच गुजरात काडर बिहार स्टेट आई मस्ट टेल यू गुप्ता जी इज होम स्टेट उत्तर प्रदेश काडर वेस्ट बंगाल देर इज सम साइलेंस राइटली सो राइट फ्रॉम द टाइम आई लैंडेड एट दिस प्लेस माई मेडन विजिट आई वॉज इन साउंड कंपनी ऑफ माई वाइफ डॉक्टर सुदेश धनखड़ but even without her it would have been amazing experience with her it is exponential <laughs> she has been a formidable challenge to me for 45 years always taunting i am only a graduate in law she is a phd but great thing about this place is that the challenge is at the lowest level thanks to your presence here my young friends it gives me immense pleasure to be with you all on the occasion of valedictory program of phase 1 for the 2023 batch of the indian administrative service who doesn't know it the moment you got into this service you created a problem for your parents people flocked to their home for match making but times are changing i am told you are doing it on your own <laughs> the good thing is the parents and relatives are reconciled to it your parents had the greatest satisfaction when you got into the is by seeing the reaction of the neighbor and suddenly you would find an upsurge in their morale never forget what you are it is because of them it is because of their sacrifice <laughs> never ever in your life forget your parents your teachers and your friends that will take you a long way it is indeed a gratifying moment for me to address young minds i can't call you impressionable you are mature and after this training rigorous training you are impregnably mature you are made to this place and you know it it was most difficult tunnel to cross you never saw light at end of the road till you saw your name in the list a fierce competition calling for best of it but once you got into the list the next phase is started and that is this phase as i focus here on bright minds 
and promising leaders. By leaders, I don't mean political leaders. Though we are having increasing trend, bureaucrats in service and out of service get into politics and they make it to mighty positions also. I am reminded of the rich legacy of this esteemed institution where countless civil servants have been nurtured and groomed like you all to serve our great nation and all of them have contributed to the emergence of Bharat at this stage. Each of you, my friends, embodies excellence, integrity and commitment to public service, qualities that are indispensable for shaping the destiny of our nation. I see in all of you potential to define birth of your vision and conception. And trust me, you are competent. On our March to 2047 Vixit Bharat, at that point of time, all of you, each of you, will be in a commanding position. I and like me many will be watching from heaven the glorious moment. Friends, Bharat is on the rise as never before. And there is well-placed confidence that you all will be called upon to sustain and contribute to further galloping of this exponential development journey. You are seeing Bharat at a time when it is on the rise. Me and my generation have seen Bharat where there was no light in the village, no road connectivity. You can't think of tap water, you can't think of a toilet in the house. You can never imagine of a gas connection in the house. You can't have a school in your village or at the, mess, at the most you'll have to be satisfied with a primary school. And look at where we are. Let me therefore advert to the various facets of contemporaneous national scenario <coughs> pertaining to economic, political, social and geopolitical facets. On economic fundamentals, my young friends, the last decade has been marked with a sea change, unbelievable change, a change that has stunned the world and that makes the present times one of hope and possibility. Overcoming a difficult phase, which was earlier, there is transition from an environment of despondency to one of upbeat mood. You have to capitalize on it, monetize for national welfare. Our economy over this period, with standing headwinds and negotiating difficult terrain, has traversed from being fragile five global economies to being the fifth largest global economy ahead of our colonial masters, the United Kingdom, Canada, and France. In about two years, and none of us is in doubt, and none in the world is in doubt, in about two years or so, Bharat home to one-sixth of humanity would be the third largest global economy ahead of Japan and Germany. When I got into parliament in 1989, had the occasion to be a union minister, I suffered the pain. Bharat, that was known as Sone Ke Chidiya, the gold in physical terms had to be airlifted, to be placed to two Swiss banks to sustain our fiscal credibility. What I see today, I never dreamt or imagined then. That's a big change. <laughs> Let me tell my young friends, we are already third largest global purchasing power. Imagine the potential of it on economy and human resource employment. 
our marathon march from amrit kal this kal to vikshit bharat fortunately for you all is well firmed up is well scripted by visionary thought of our prime minister who is committed to the cause in mission mode with a deep passion and this is coupled with dedicated execution of your fraternity the two are complementary you have to translate into success visionary policies and that indian bureaucracy is doing day in and day out at the moment friends our economy has been spinally strengthened and you will understand much better you must have seen it transformative policies and innovative reforms resulting in ease of living for those who are in the last row as mentioned by mahatma gandhi ji in his concept of antyodaya as a matter of fact this very thoughtful concept of the mahatma the antyodaya take care of the man last in the row is being realized work is in progress but by and large it is ground reality the world's largest tax reform and mind you in a country of 1.4 billion people with this diversity that is goods and services tax was unfolded in the central hall of parliament in 2017 by the then honorable president pranab mukherjee and prime minister narendra modi the chief architect of gst my young friends in the same central hall you would recall i am talking in terms of historical development at the stroke of midnight hour on 15th august 1947 india upon attainment of independence had twisted its destiny and at the stroke of midnight on 1st july 2017 the nation with the commencement of gst regime had a twist with modernity what a swing twist with destiny getting to twist with modernity in the same hallowed precincts of parliament gst has been a game changer reform a unifier for national economy and has added to the growth of the economy making it more transparent and enabling for its contributors contrary to global scenario you know the global scenario you are informed minds discerning minds you know the state of affairs in developed nations nations in europe america and others they are facing difficult scenario but our bharat has been steadily rising our economy is looking up despite the challenges and the challenges emanated from covid pandemic and presently global conflagrations threatening supply chains it must be soothing to all of you that hardly a week passes when our navy has not performed to save the supply chains to rescue victims of piracy every indian would be proud of their accomplishments nation has witnessed not pyramidical but plateau kind of social development let me tell you if it is pyramidical some will rise others will not but those of you who are interested in geography and know what plateau means you uplift all at the same level and this is happening in our country for the needy and suffering which will be your primary concern upliftment has been transformative beyond contemplation my young friends in a country of our size and diversity it was indeed a staggering staggering thought 
forget about achievement just a thought that every household will have electricity difficult to think we were thinking in terms of a village being electrified if one household in a village is electrified we were happy but look at the staggering thought that occurred in the mind of visionary leadership of the prime minister he thought every household will have electricity toilet tap water and gas connection and every person would have access to health and education facilities a good wish list a great dream but what has happened these are now largely ground reality and the work is in progress you will have to sustain it you will have to give qualitative as to it you are gifted i would say by destiny to serve the largest democracy on the planet friends an imaginable milestone high digital and technological connectivity across the country has been no less than a stunning accomplishment there was a time when we were decades behind global technological movements look at where we are we are turning out to be leaders taste of the pudding lies in eating let me share with you certain accomplishments this has resulted in india accounting 50% of global digital transactions in the year 2023 we are one sixth of humanity but our share of global digital transactions is 50% something that will make our head high we will ever take pride in this accomplishment digital connectivity and robust infrastructure has enormously benefited the country because it is available now in every nook and corner of the country it dots our geographical area every village has it you no longer suffer the pain if you are from a village you will get the same facility internet accessibility that is the job of the government and adaptability that is citizen centric but when we judge our performance on internet accessibility and adaptability in every part of the country is evidenced by the fact that our per capita internet consumption happens to be more than that of usa and china taken together this game changer technological penetration has also massively contributed to governance accountability and transparency in your assignments you will have to sharpen it make it more productive a challenge i have no doubt you will overcome my young friends you are too young to know about it but you can look back in history we had a young prime minister in 80s our prime minister then lamented that not even 15% of the amount meant for the development reaches the beneficiary it was his concern how do i tackle this minus only 15% 85% goes elsewhere goes for the purpose not meant it only enables those who are engaged in corruption to gain thereby his lament was this and now what a 360 degree change the intended beneficiary receives digitally 100% assistance without leakage without cut money without intermediary he receives in his bank in her bank that takes me that what a visionary step was taken to include 500 million people in banking system 
they opened their accounts for the first time look at the gain we are getting from there of let me come to my grassroots i am son of a farmer i am from a i am from a village i am first generation to step out in that sense of the term what i see today and what i could not imagine when i was a minister and a member of parliament 34 years ago that now 100 million farmers three times a year receive direct transfers to their banks of fiscal assistance of the central government pm kisan nidhi samman the government may be prepared the robust infrastructure may be prepared but the glorious accomplishment is that farmer is prepared to receive it is receiving it and this amount at the moment my young friends is about 3 lakh crores not a small amount service delivery for the ordinary person has been technologically driven given the facility in nearly all the villages with computer centers look at our young people in the villages or tier 2 cities when they apply for a job when they fill an examination form when they seek a passport they no longer have to use the old method that was heavy drain on finance and hours they do it by technological means we in the country needed a big change in education new education policy after a gap over three decades is now poised to bring about much needed revolutionary change in the education system it is now tailored to suit our needs our thinking our dreams we don't dream in a foreign language we dream in our own language it is tailor made to suit our needs and the shift is from mere degree orientation to skill evolution and the shift is very timely our rail road and air connectivity which you see day in and day out ask your grandparents ask your parents what was the situation then and what the situation now not only quantitative but qualitative also we are having world class railway stations world class airports and look at our roads and look at multiple choices for connectivity to a particular place let me go to my home state jaipur delhi jaipur there was earlier one through alwar over a period of time it came direct through kotputli and now it is part of the delhi bombay grand highway world class highway the time earlier it used to be 19 hours was reduced to 5 6 hours now about 3 hours that's a big change our infrastructure has shown quantum jump quantitatively and qualitatively and matches global best on international front this is your times you must have seen it g20 presidency of bharat was incredibly successful every state and union territory organized g20 functions the world witnessed bharat its civilizational ethos of more than 5000 years old they were exposed to our culture they were exposed to the sharpness intellect of our human resource they were exposed to the level of reception we people have in this country and the final was held where bharat mandapam no one knew when it came suddenly it came up one of the top 10 global centers convention centers the prime minister had the honor and privilege 
to receive world leaders and look at the backdrop. You must have seen it all. And when the world leaders walked through the alley to the main hall, they were exposed to our civilizational wealth of 5,000 years. And then we had P20, Parliament 20. That was at Eshobhumi. None had heard of it. Such a convention center with parking place for more than 3,000 cars. I was there at both the places. I couldn't believe my eyes. But what was surprising and soothing that the global leaders were uploading it. That is what it is. Our growth is not in just infrastructure. G20 will be historically known that Bharat is emerging as a world leader, sharpening its soft diplomatic power. African Union has been included in G20. We became voice of Global South. I don't want to advert to other areas, you know it more than I do. Friends, governance, that would largely be your concern. Largely has taken a turn for the better. The times with Mr. Sunil Gupta, 87 batch or your director, faced were very different. The challenges before them very different. The terrain was very difficult. Yet they made success of it. You are well positioned to take a big leap because equality before law that eluded us for long. You must have seen it. Some were more equal than others. Some thought we were privileged pedigree. Some thought law cannot reach us. We are immune, immune to legal process. It must have been pain to, pain to young minds. How can someone in a country that is democratic be more equal than the other? But this equality before law had eluded us for long. And corruption, it was running into the veins of administration, like blood. Both these menaces, pernicious mechanisms, are now behind us. My young friends, you and your colleagues in civil servants, have contributed to this revolution silently. You will have the occasion to contribute massively. It will be mostly in silence. But trust me, when accomplishment is effected in silence, it resonates in the ears of the common man and one and all. Now, privileged pedigree for long beyond the rule of law, was reaping the harvest. And meritocracy suffered. You are all product, remember, of meritocracy. It is your merit that has positioned you in this place to be public servants of Bharat. And what is happening to the privileged pedigree? They are sulking in the bylanes. A big change. Democratic values and essence is equally deepening before law because it is being enforced in exemplary fashion. Corruption, my young friends, is no longer a trading commodity. Earlier, it was the only mechanism, a passage to contract recruitment opportunity. Nothing would happen unless you take this route. Those who took this route, facilitated the route by being corrupt, are being made to take root of law. You know it more than I do where. Our power, power corridors, 
you will be there power will be there in you because you earned it you are entitled for it you are competent to use that power but power corridors there was a time and not long ago were infested by corrupt elements the extra legally leverage decision making a challenge which you will not face which your seniors faced you have a soothing wholesome environment what do we see now no obesity transparency and accountability i was exposed to governance aspects when i headed a group of 10 governors on ease of governance i therefore came to be educated i would say what was the situation earlier and what is the situation now the change could not have been far more effective than it is today the cumulative impact of all these concerted changes has been that the country has been pulled out of despondency the people were losing hope they were thinking pastors elsewhere they were worried they were not sure about themselves because they were not sure about the system and what is now india has become land of hope and possibility a hot spot of global opportunity favorite destination of investment this is where you are at the moment you have to capitalize on this situation we were living at times at your age when we used to satisfy ourselves india has potential india is a sleeping giant but my young friends you are fortunate i would say in a country of 1.4 billion people you are fortunate your number here is not in three digits within three digits not getting into four digits and you can take pride now india is no longer a nation with potential we are no longer a sleeping giant we are on the move you have to accelerate this moment the global establishments i indicated to you the goal had to be physically airlifted they were in punishing mode for us as they are in punishing mode for our neighbors or some other countries but what do they say about us now the world bank the imf and the forums like world economic forum they have acclaimed from public domain in high decibel our phenomenal rise indicating india is a model which others can follow in the field of digitization and several other areas the nation suffered some problems and we were reconciled we have to live with them we were in a state of hopelessness article 370 the only temporary article of the constitution was presumed to be only final article of the constitution people advocated after taking oath of the constitution that article 370 is beyond change you would know historically that dr ambedkar chairman of the drafting committee drafted all the articles of the constitution except article 370 peep into history you will find out he declined to do it his communication on this point is very emotive and that emotion was taken care of during this decade article 370 is no longer in the constitution a big change we never imagined what i'm indicating to you is that you will have to contribute more 
because some of the greatest obstacles that pained us have been overcome. And look at what has happened after Article 370 ceased to be in the Constitution. Jammu and Kashmir is blossoming. The number of tourists there, and I can suggest to you, once you engage, if you have not already done, in your marital relationships, this could be your hot favorite destination also. I was there with Dr. Sudhir Dankar, then the situation was fine. I don't blame her for situation worsening, but when as a minister I went there in 1990, he stayed in Centaur Hotel. It was deathly silence. And now lakhs and lakhs of tourists are going there. Can you imagine? Unfurling flag there was a difficult situation. And now G20 functions were held there. World leaders were there. Their economy is looking up. Members of your tribe, I am using tribe in a positive sense, don't catch it from that sense, who had the occasion to have that as your cadre state, had the occasion to serve it for decades, but denied <coughs> even a piece of land for your residence, to put it from your perspective. That big change has taken place. Hope has been rekindled in Jammu and Kashmir. Huge positive upsurge in economy and development of the area. It is favorite tourist destination. destination. Another aspect, women reservation. For three decades, I wouldn't uh, decry anyone. Earnest efforts were made to see that they become part of policy making. They become part of legislature, part of lawmaking. Earnest efforts were made, they did not succeed. Fortunately, they succeeded. Last year, women representation in Lok Sabha will be more than one third, because one third is reserved. It will be in state legislatures more than one third. And this reservation comes with societal anger also. Scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, women will get reservation within the reservation. So the reservation has a societal anger by being both horizontal and vertical. I have no doubt, and not because I have a only daughter, women will contribute more effectively, impactfully, and soothingly the human face of policy. By their training, the life they lead, the challenges they face, they are well equipped to give that input. But they can give it only when they are in the room where decisions are taken. And they will have this occasion now. My young friends, I have in macro manner adverted to these aspects with a purpose. I can keep on going, several aspects are there, you know it. I touched only the broad points at macro level. Because at your launch pad time, you have an enabling ecosystem that will help you expand your talent and dedication optimally for the nation. You can effect the change you believe in. This is a rare opportunity. People believe in a change. They are handicapped in bringing about the change. But you will be convinced of that change. And as a matter of fact, you are obligated to bring about the change. Having said all this, there are some very simply alarming challenges we face from within and without. There is a strategized orchestration of factually untenable anti-national narratives aimed at tenting and tarnishing our glorified and robust constitutional bodies, decrying 
our growth journey. I don't think we need lessons from anyone about rule of law, about our robust judicial system, about methods to alleviate poverty. How can anyone lecture in the world to a nation that from April 1, 2020 is making available free food to 85, 850 million people? This does not indicate poverty. This is a helping hand to them that yes, they must keep on coming up and rising to a higher level. We can't allow others to calibrate us because they neither have the resources, nor knowledge, nor understanding how this country works with 5,000 year old ethos where we treat and that treatment is reflected in our G20 motto, one earth, one family, one future. When I was talking about anti-national narratives, you are well-informed minds. Just imagine, Citizen Amendment Act. Now, anyone who can spare a moment with modest intellect to go through that Amendment Act would know it does not deprive anyone of his or her citizenship. doesn't deprive. It does not handicap anyone on the, on the globe to apply for Indian citizenship. The system is there. What does it do? It facilitates acquisition of Indian citizenship. For whom? For Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis and Christians from our neighborhood, country like Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan and who are in this country prior to 31st December 2014. It is not an invitation for influx. And why it is being conferred on them? It's a healing touch to them. They were being persecuted on account of their religious belief. Our nation has been home to such people for thousands of years. Jews, Parsis, Zoroastrians, they found sanctuary, growth, wholesome situation here. And this some call discriminatory. We have to neutralize these narratives. These emanate not out of ignorance. These emanate out of a strategy to run down our nation. This nation on the planet does not need any scripture or sermon from anyone on the point of equality. We have believed in it. Let them look back. Some countries are yet to have a woman president. We had a woman prime minister before UK had. We had a Supreme Court. In other countries, Supreme Court had completed two centuries and more without a woman just We have. We welcome all lectures, all sources of knowledge, if they emanate from bona fide intentions. Friends, the freedom and democracy that we take for granted today is an outcome of unimaginable sacrifices by many valiant unsung heroes of our freedom movement. Fortunately, we are giving their due to our heroes now, though belatedly. We have now Prakram Divas celebrating the role of Netaji Swas boss. And his statue is there at India Gate. Belatedly, but we are doing honor to him. We have Jan Jati Gaurav Divas dedicated to Birsa Munda. At what age this tribal leader contributed to freedom movement? 
This is just to name two. Many more. Recent confirmation of Bharat Ratna, the highest civil in Nawad, posthumously, to Karpuri Thakur. The name is Tits. Social justice in us. Chaudhi Charan Singh, a symbol of transparency, accountability, integrity, and firm believer in growth of village. P.V. Narsimha Rao, a politician statesman. Dr. M.S. Swaminathan, our agriculture was revolutionized by him. All these have been widely acclaimed. The owner to these noble souls should have come long ago. My young friends, you will impact this society more than anyone else. When I say more than anyone else, I'm not spelling out others. But the moment you become a district magistrate, imagine the faith people have in you. Of all ages, they look up to you as a role model. It's a gratifying moment for them when they meet you. The way you behave in society is taken to be worth emulation. You are inspiration and motivation for the area in which you operate. And therefore, corresponding obligation on you, you will have to exemplify your conduct accordingly. You will have to seek admiration of the elders. And you will have to be motivational for younger minds. Work with Seva Bhav and Sanubhuti, a sense of service and empathy, deeply embedded in our civilization ethos, has to be your guiding principle. Adhere to it. It will change this society. And you have the capacity to catalyze this change. My young friends, your potential is undoubted. Your ability is established. Your opportunity is well recognized. And in such a situation, you have to take care of certain things which are deficiencies in our society, like public discipline, to name just one. You can transform it. The greatest challenge to our democracy polity is emerging from those, and here I caution you, those who have been part of dispensation, part of governance, have held positions of power, had all the occasion under the sun to contribute for growth of this nation. Once out of authority, they become complete recipe for chaos. They would say, India is sinking. Its economy cannot go beyond this level. You know who I'm referring to? I did not give the name to you. You know it. We have to challenge this, as was indicated by one of the speakers here. We can't take it as firm and final. The reputation they built was on the opportunity they got in governance. They are flitting, flitting away because they tend to look things from political prism. We have to address nationalism and look the prism that promotes nationalism. These people who have poor appetite for India's growth trajectory must need some rebuff from young minds in positions of authority and constitutional obligations to serve this nation. I find it painful on occasions and deeply concerning that commitment to nationalism is not what it should be in some people. They take nationalism next to their political or self-welfare. We have to nurture our spirit. The nationalism has to be our prime concern. We always have to keep our nation first and above everything else. Now next, I can address 
this point only before such an informed audience. Nothing can be more challenging to democracy than an informed mind, a knowledgeable mind, a mind in whom you believe that yes, he's a great lawyer, he's a great economist, he's a great social scientist. If such a mind gets perverted for political reasons, tries to exploit ignorance of the people for political gain, people are carried away. They will say, yes, he is an economist, a great economist, acknowledged economist. We have elevated him to iconic level. Therefore, what he says must be true. You are enabled by your intellect, training, capacity and constitutional obligations to take wind out of this. I'm sure you'll do it. There can be no politics over national affairs, security concerns, and our foreign policy. The global rise of the nation has always to be in your mind so that you ever ensure the momentum never loses force. My dear friends, you can bring about transformation which you have dreamt because the system has generated enough equity for you to perform. When I refer to governance days of Gupta Ji or your director or other officials, the equity was not there. They couldn't take quantum jump. In your case, the equity is more than sufficient and I'm sure you'll do it. Sardar Patel once said, I quote, Faith is of no avail in absence of strength. Faith and strength both are essential to accomplish any great work. He further added in Constituent Assembly, you will not have a united India if you are not a good all India service which has the independence to speak out its mind. I read it there when I paid floral tribute to the iron man of the country. Never forget, he achieved what was very daunting, virtually impossible, integration of princely states. You need to be fully updated. Why integration of Jammu and Kashmir was kept away from him? These two situations, Article 370, kept away from Dr. Ambedkar, State of Jammu and Kashmir taken away from the portfolio of Sardar Patel and look at how we suffered for decades. You will be facing another situation which others have not faced, though you will be at the junior most level, but the challenge will be more forceful to you. I am referring to disruptive technologies. Artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, machine learning, blockchain, and the kind. It is your obligation because we are at the cusp of something like another industrial revolution. These technologies will be with us. These offer both opportunity and challenges. You'll have to convert challenges into opportunities for public good, and I'm sure you'll do it. I think I have taken more time than I should have. I would therefore conclude, congratulate each of you on this great positioning, on this very rigorous training. If you have had any serious thought about director and the faculty being unreasonable to you or harsh to you, you will be grateful to them all your lives and remember them for the good they have done to you. May you continue to inspire others and mind you, each of you is a role model for your family, 
for your friends, for your community, for our area, and you'll be ever a role model when you'll be positioned at a particular place for a particular work. And therefore, inspire others with your commitment and always strive to make positive difference in the lives of those around you. Thank you, Jayanth.